If you didn't know that this is right behind Machu Picchu, stick around for more travel tips on your upcoming trip to Peru. Wait, show that little grape face. Look at grape face. Like, you can't get that guy everywhere in the world. <laughs> Ever since the first caveman grabbed a piece of charcoal to write down his travel bucket list, Machu Picchu might as well have already been printed on there. <laughs> sure, if you want to scuba or skydive or maybe swim with dolphins, you'll find a few places around the world to make that happen. But if you want to visit Machu Picchu, well, you get it. In this video, we'll be living on two approximate budgets. We'll travel to Machu Picchu, as many do, via the train and bus. This is medium terrifying <laughs> this side right now. But we're also staying overnight in the only property that's located right at the gates. It also just so happens to be one of the swankiest hotels we've ever stayed in. It wasn't always like this. If you've been with us from the beginning, you've seen us stay in $7 hotel rooms, sleep on a lot of airport floors, and miss out on incredible opportunities simply because we didn't have the money to make it happen. But after creating our travel gear business and growing it over the past five years, our travel budget has certainly increased and we're finally checking some big things off the bucket list. And just because we have the budget though, we find ourselves often asking, is this even worth it? Indulging can be a taste of the good life, but sometimes it can leave you feeling like a sucker. And a strict budget can be a grind until you realize you might be getting 99% of the experience that actually matters. What's worth the money? That's exactly what we're exploring in Thousand Verse 100. And we're off to Machu Picchu in the dirtiest of cars. Why is our car so dirty already? Well, because we have actually been here in Peru for three weeks. And I feel like this has been like the journey, the longest journey to Machu Picchu, starting in Lima, making our way through the country. We saved the biggest for last on this trip for sure. Which is kind of fun. Like to continue to look forward to what's coming next on this trip. If you're interested in the rest of Peru, we encourage you to go check out that other episode with all the other adventures that we've had here. But today, one of the seven wonders of the world requires its own episode. Well, here's all the porters on their way back. Obviously, one way to get to Machu Picchu is to trek there. And here is the awesome team that makes that happen. <laughs> it's cool to see them. I wonder if they're going or coming. Wow, look at their packs. Garage parking, quince soles per noche. It's pretty, pretty good. This is the super cute little town of Ollantaytambo. It is one of the train stops if you're coming up here from Cusco. Now, the way that we've done Peru isn't necessarily how we would recommend most people doing Peru or doing Machu Picchu. Um, we just wanted to take a road trip around the country. Today, we're gonna talk all about how you take the train and how you get to Machu Picchu. It is not like going to just the Colosseum in Rome. It is a whole process to get out into the middle of the mountains. There are no roads that go there, and let's talk more about that. Most people are arriving from Cusco. So here's Cusco, and here's Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu still truly is a lost city out in the depths of the Andes, and there are still no roads that lead here. So, some adventurous travelers trek and tour groups on multi-night hikes. A wonderful adventure, I'm sure. But most take a combination of train and bus. The train will take you from Cusco as far as Aguas Calientes, and there you'll take a 25-minute switchback bus ride up the side of the mountain to the entrance. After three weeks in Peru, we're already halfway up the train route here in Ollantaytambo and boarding here. Right here at the train station, there's a storage room. You're only permitted to bring small hand luggage on the train. So if you're traveling around you know, South America or Peru for longer and you want to store some of your things, looks like there's luggage storage right here. We have left a lot of our things at our hotel room. We're kind of double booked on hotel rooms to go up here, but this is a really good alternative. Okay, gracias. 
I'm talking to a real, real niche group here. But if you're crazy like us and you are deciding to take your dog to Machu Picchu, first of all, dogs are not allowed in Machu Picchu. So we're just taking her to the town of Aguas Calientes and um, she's just gonna hang out in the hotel. Um, I, she is allowed to come. She has to be in the kennel. I think it's helping that she's small. I showed the woman our train tickets and all of the information that we have when we arrived in Peru. So that's what's allowing Pepper to ride on the train. My only information that I have on large dogs is the fact that um, Max and Lee with Oxy came up here and Max and Oxy had to, or Aki, had to walk into Aguas Calientes from here maybe it's like a two-hour hike um so that might you might be hiking if you have a bigger dog pepper at pichu who would have thought <laughs> <laughs> you know those shots you see on other people's channels where they follow them into like the airplane or the train or whatever and the girl's always like, oh it's amazing and there's all the space and it looks like, you know, a movie. How do they get those? Whenever we're getting on anything it's always like, cram, stop, cram, go, go. That's what it is. Hey, we're here now. <laughs> there are lots of trains to choose from, so you can really pick what type of experience you want. We went for a panoramic view. Um, we went for no live music so that we could uh, record audio for you and talk on the train. Um, on this one in Peru Rail, we do have assigned seats. Not that we chose them, but you were assigned a seat and then it's pretty empty, especially because we're in the middle of the day here, which is not a very popular time to go up to Pichu. Um, and because it's so empty, then we're able to move around on the train, which is great. The views are beautiful. Welcome to Aguas Calientes. That's my favorite part so far. Yes. No. Does anybody oh want to see the cheap hotel? I feel like you just want to see the expensive hotel. So why even book in Aguas Caliente? Well, you can get a really early bus up to Pichu Pichu. If you're coming from Cusco, you just can't do it. You still got to take a train, Aguas Caliente, then the bus up there. You're just not going to be the first person up there. So that's why you come up here. My review of the hotel, as I want to do it. Cleanliness, location, and stress removal coming from Cusco first thing in the morning, 10 out of 10. Dog friendliness. Pepper had her own little white angel cloud bed. Oh, that's why they asked what her name was. Oh, well, because they wrote it on there? Yeah. Oh, Peppa! They really wow. think clean dogs are staying here. Pepper, you've never had what? a white bed. Wow, a white bed is a very brave choice. A++. Food. There was a huge spread down there, but nothing was good. Pepper really enjoyed the uh, turkey slices. One out of five. Noise. It's a hotel by the train tracks. All these hotels are right by the train tracks. My rating is don't go by the pool if you don't want to get wet. You're going to hear the train no matter where you are in town. Thank you. Finally, 
view is right down the Rio, Cape Bonita out of Cape Bonita. Check out this view. I don't know how this could have turned out better. When we walked into the hotel, it's, you know, right over by the train tracks. So I thought our room was going to be just listening to trains rolling all Some day. of them are. Some of them are. So just double check. I will take the trickle of a river over there. Yeah. You have, like, no idea there's a train on the other side. All of a sudden, you're, like, in no, nature. No, no. This is awesome. On our budget day, we're grabbing dinner near the train tracks, one of our most expensive meals in the country in this touristy town. And what you might be doing from here is heading to bed early to catch one of the earliest buses up to Machu Picchu. The buses are running every 15 minutes. So once you get to Aguas Calientes on the train, no matter whether you are deciding to stay the night or you're heading right to Machu Picchu, you can head right into town. Everything is really small. You, you won't get lost here. Um, follow the signs to the bus ticketing station. You can buy your ticket there and you can choose one way or both ways. Some people like to you know, hike up to Machu Picchu. Some people like to walk down at the end of the day. Um, some people are just on a budget. So whatever you would like, you can purchase your bus tickets. They're not for any specific time. And then jump in a probably pretty large line if you are any time before noon and then ride up to Machu Picchu. So you can probably start to see how much of a process it is just to get up to Machu Picchu. You might also be wondering where is like this luxury version? Well at the top of that hill that the bus takes you to there is one hotel and I haven't like I never even heard of this I didn't even know it was there I just like happened to find it on hotels.com and we'll be using some chase nights to stay tonight up at Machu Picchu. So I'm really excited about the second half of this trip, but right now we're gonna go maybe buy some things in Aguas Calientes, then head up and go check out our thousand dollar version of Machu Picchu. It's called Aguas Calientes for a reason. There are hot springs in town. And since it's been a whole week since we've been in hot springs, yeah. Were we going to come here and Tim was not going to do the hot springs? No. I don't think so. <laughs> I really like a hot spring. Uh, 20 soles per person. Hot deal. Hot deal. Rent towels all over. Bring your swimsuit. Bring your swimsuit. And guess who can even come in? Pepper can come if she's in her little bed. <laughs> there's um, little shops selling bathing suits too if you're desperate. If you're already here and you <laughs> yeah. don't have your bathing suit, there's, there's uh, shops you can get one. Look at that. Uh, just that. Perfect. Finally time to go up. It's a um, pretty casual line with just us in it. So I guess that's the benefit of going up in the afternoon. <laughs> Maybe this would just be a better time to see Machu Picchu in the afternoon? I don't know. We'll see when we get up there. We're just going to the hotel. I wonder if we can like peek and like see a little bit of it today. But our tickets are for early in the morning tomorrow. Well, this is so crazy. I wasn't expecting to be the only people on the bus. Um, but now you can do a full tour here. Uh, it's like, what is it, 2.30 or 3 in the afternoon, and Machu Picchu closes at 5 o'clock, and most of the tickets are three hours long, so that's why nobody's here, is because probably the 2 o'clock bus is one of the last ones, so you can enjoy your entire time at Machu Picchu. We'll tell you all about the different like tickets and circuits tomorrow when we're actually there, but I mean, to stay at the top, I wonder really, like we're gonna be right next to it, so <laughs> you'll see when I do. <laughs> budget or you just want the experience of trekking up without doing the multi-day trek uh, it looks like you don't have to follow all the switchback on this gnarly road up it looks like there's marked uh, pathways and stairs to go straight there but this is pretty 
far, so far, but uh, hey, that might be part of your experience. Okay, wait a minute. You, you don't want to walk up here. This is like a half hour bus ride. Oh, oh my gosh, this is so, so beautiful. Oh, and then passing the other buses. This is, I mean, even the bus ride is a journey. Oh boy. Oh, ooh. Man, I couldn't even back up the RAV4 down that last <laughs> gravel road. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. Just another day on the road. Wow. Bye, everybody. It's so pretty. I mean, if you come up here at 3 in the morning, it's dark. This is medium terrifying. This <laughs> side right now. You can kind of see part of it already. Maybe the back side. Sometimes. Oh, there's buildings and stuff. It's always this stuff that's like in the background that I'm always curious oh, about. This is the hotel, right? The sanctuary? Oh, the hotel's right here. Okay. Cool. Aquí estamos. Easy peasy. Okay. This is so fancy. She, like, we were just like, you know, guided in here and like. Gracias. Gracias. Okay, come check it out with us because we haven't looked at anything yet. Okay. Like, I just. I didn't even know that this was here. It's, this is beautiful. Oh, <gasps> is that where Anna Pichu right? That one right there. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's see. Oh my gosh. Like, how can you be a person who traveled all the time and didn't even know that there's a hotel at Machu Picchu? So I didn't realize that Wait, everything that? was included. I don't know, beautiful treats? This is like, beautiful? we just had those grape people. This is the next okay. step. <laughs> the next step of grape people. What is it? This is, this is part of, of the, it looks like a tomato. Do you think it's a chocolate covered tomato? Do you think they like glued this, like the leaf on or is that part of the... Does it taste like a tomato? Or is that a cookie? What fruit is this? Do you know what this is? Will you write it in the comments? What the heck? Oh, yeah. It's the stem. Pull See? it. See? Okay, so it's part of it. It wasn't just... No. Yeah, it wasn't like chocolate glued on. What the heck? How fun is that? Because you can eat it? I like the cookies. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know what it tastes like. It, it feels like a grape tomato when you bite into it, but it's sweet like a... Smart. <laughs> Come here for more food travel tips. <laughs> Mini bar is included. Breakfast is included. Dinner is included. Drinks are included. Wait, check what's in there. <laughs> Oh. The real reason you're here, let's talk money. Look, it's me. How? <laughs> okay, how much does it cost to stay at one of those seven wonders of the world? Well, hotel rooms vary in cost all the time, like throughout the year. Tonight's room rate was about a thousand US dollars. <sighs> Steep. Um, so, because that just hurts my heart so much, we are using chase points. It's like 98,000 chase points. Yeah. 
Um, but this is part of our job. <laughs> and um, if you're new here, we just share our vacations on YouTube. We're not like sponsored, we're not staying in this hotel for free. Um, we just really like making these travel shows and marketing our own small travel gear business called Trip Travel Gear. <laughs> Okay, so basically we're asking the question, is this worth it? This was such a bucket list item as somebody who speaks Spanish, who's somebody who's wanted to like travel through South America, Machu Picchu, like I can't believe that it's right there. So instead of just coming up for a couple hours from Cusco in this long, big whole day, I'm really making several days of this trip all about Machu Picchu. And we don't know the answer yet because we just checked in, but it's really, like what is this experience of coming and actually getting to stay and sleep next to Machu Picchu? Maybe we should go walk around and like see what we can see like just from the hotel. Let's go explore. <laughs> This is the orchid walk, and there's over a hundred types of orchids, but also <laughs> there's Machu Picchu. Oh my god. Sometimes we just like to take a break and take it all in. Pepper, you are at Picchu. It's right there, honey. So close, so far. Good girl. You can still see people at it. And never having been there before. I don't know. It looks like this is like the back side, not that main view that you always see. But, I mean, I feel like so much of seeing Machu Picchu is the Wayana Picchu mountain right there. Like that is just... Oh. So you feel like you're in a different country now? I mean, this is not the Peru that we have seen for three weeks. Like to be here in the jungle surrounded by orchids and these beautiful birds chirping. It's like we're totally on a whole different trip. This oh, is what this is doing. This is like watching previews before a movie. <laughs> like the movies tomorrow, they just the landscapes and like look at that little epic like ch ch out of the cloud oh. like ooh, ooh, don't look at me too much don't look at me this you is can see a little so magical wow okay so if you have if you've been up here before like this is where all of the buses are going to be coming up i'm sure it'll be pretty noisy tomorrow with all the bus traffic and everything but just above it this nice bench and these orchids. They give you the lay of the land. The bus drops you off right here. The mountain is right there. There are bathrooms here. You walk up and enter through there. Make sure you have your ticket in advance. Don't plan on getting them up here. And the hotel is back here and that is the balcony where we left our door open on our room. <laughs> and then here's everybody leaving for today. Right out the exit there. All right, photographers, just so you know, no tripods. And it seems like those are pretty legit rules. I'm not, is this a hamburger? That might be a hamburger, no food. No hamburgers. Do you see a dog yet? No fun, I don't see dog. Uh, okay. I mean, maybe she could come around in the bolsa. Around the world, we are going to have many countries that has grapes, wine, and his own grapes distillation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Examples: Italy, grappa. grappa. Yes. Spain, orujo. Bolivia, singani. Greece, raki. And Peru, yeah. pisco. Oh. Is there something special in the Peruvian pisco? Yes, and I can mention faster. Yeah. I can mention faster and in a pro way for a special difference that make the Peruvian pisco uh, like a superior brandy. Well, you can tell it's from grapes. It is like just this really, really strong wine. Have we been here for three weeks and we, we have not had pure pisco? pisco. pisco. Yeah. yeah. I haven't even like, seen these in the store yet. It's a grapes distillation. Yes? Oh, that's good. Peace out.
we double check to ask. Dogs are not allowed. <laughs> so Pepper is right there. <laughs> All these people here. And then um, I've seen some heartbroken faces already this morning. The people who had the first bus who got up here were their first in line. There's this upper section up here, and there's a lower section down there. The upper section is if you're going to routes one through four. If you're hiking any of the mountains, it looks like you go get in line down below. So those poor people who were on the bus who had first in line were so excited, and then they were told to go down there, and now they're not first in line anymore. So just a uh, tip, there's different entrances to depending on um, if you're like doing a hike up the mountain or not. Okay, aquí estamos. It's incredible. Oh my god. <laughs> Gosh, you know, honestly like every person that we've met has been so so nice. I mean even the guy working the door at Machu Picchu, I mean, that's usually the like most annoyed person with tourists in any country. And could that be a nicer guy? Like he even went to go ask about Pepper just to double check because he wasn't sure. And like, just this country has been so incredible with the people, really. Okay, I feel like we're gonna turn the corner and it's gonna be like right there. Okay, one of the first things you need to do is decide what circuit you're doing, and I don't even really know what to do. <laughs> so, I know that I want to be as high as possible and to have a good view this way. So, let's follow this first sign, circuit one and two, because we wanted to hike Machu Picchu Mountain, but Pepper's making that a little too hard. Okay, the first steps. So, if you've been to Machu Picchu, or if you're planning now, these circuits are new. I think you used to be able to just to walk around, but with COVID, there's different routes. That was part of it. You know, I don't think that they allow you to hike until seven. I mean, I couldn't get a ticket before seven. I might be wrong. Double check on that, but the six o'clock entrance might just be us. Right now, we're still on the circuit one and two. But I think that this is the only way to get up high like this. Three and four were only lower. I mean, this is... Oh, there's... There's the photo spot. According to those people, at least. Wow, that's gorgeous. Who would have known? A couple glaciers in the distance of... There's some Machu. pow over there. <laughs> some lines. Shred some pow over there. First, Pichu, <laughs> then... Pow. pow. <laughs> hey, we finally did something right. Like we wanted to get up to the spot first thing in the morning. Yeah, like nobody's <laughs> as here. As much stuff as we do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> we made a beeline for this spot. I'm kind of proud of this right <laughs> There was one video that I said like, <laughs> I always wanted to know what it's like on the other side of Machu Picchu and one of you guys sent me a video you were like hey it looks like here's what it is but here's like a full 360 from this viewing spot this isn't like a great spot maybe over here so like the path coming in the beautiful mountains Pichu that's the Wyoming Pichu mountain and then like over there with the glaciers oh and there's another glacier up there I think what's so magical is like the whole surrounding environment. Like you only see in a photo one direction, but it's like the quietness of being so high up and like the vastness of just surrounded by all these mountains. It's so cool. Are you kidding me? There's a river. All these times, all these photos I've seen, there's a river right there. Never, never knew that. The guy in the hot tub told you about the Rios? Well, yes, yes, I yesterday. did. I hear it. At length and in detail. <laughs> we'll talk about him later because I'm wearing his necklace. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Spoiler alert, there's a fun story for later. <laughs> 
Um, just a couple more people have come up here so far. It feels very private. So do we have a pro tip? Get the six o'clock and get up. I thought this was going to be like just a mob up here, just based on every single person ever going to Machu Picchu having a picture right here. <laughs> I thought there'd be like, not chaos, but you know, like a line to wait in. Yeah, it really is quiet. Yeah, it really is. Now, photographers, depending on, depending on how you want the sun, here at the beginning of June, we've got the nice, like a subtle light. There's no sun on anything, if you want that. There's literally a dog running around. Dog. Well, you're only allowed to come here as a dog if you're born here. Oh, that's fair. Okay, so now I see the first people that are down in there, but that's about it. So if you started with circuit three or four, you would be in there by now. So circuits one and two, like at this viewpoint, like I feel like this is the way to go. We always talk about whether the expensive place we stay at is worth it. And most of the time we're coming away and saying like, no, save your money for experiences. But if this helps cement in getting in at six and certainly like not everybody who's here at six was at the hotel but it helps it made it so easy and so stress-free rather than like i don't i don't know how competitive it is for bus tickets and then to get up here and anything can happen that was very nice to walk out of the hotel <laughs> okay people are arriving it's getting a little bit louder here we stood over there for a good like 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, don't you think? Absolutely. Like you're definitely gonna get your picture. And then of course there's multiple people that are there and available to help take your picture. But there was a difference between five of us up there and now there's 20. Yeah, minutes. look at all these people. So what time, will you check the time? 6.45. Oh, 6.45. Yeah. We've been here for 45 minutes? Si, sí, claro. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we have to hurry. <laughs> they said some people, People doing two to three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Our first hour is just looking at it. We spent 15 minutes with you jumping on my back. Cheese, 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 it's cheese. cheese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, walk me over. Good eyes, guys. Um, if you're looking for this spot, there's some big rocks right here that you can put your camera on. Wow, we went from not finding the spot this morning to now here's your hot tip. <laughs> this is hot, hot camera tip right there and then there's like this little legal spot to stand <laughs> and some rocks ah. i am so excited that the circuit one and two is working out so well i've seen in other videos people being kind of like corralled and pushed through but honestly like i think this whole pathway we're going to be able to enjoy the view and then enjoy the view at multiple different lighting moments another great spot okay so we've now come down and then there's this whole actual like platform to hang out at. So it's all great spots. So there's, there's just lots. So we have no tips. Everything's great. <laughs> uh, no tips. Hey, uh, Machu Picchu is pretty great. Remember, Come here. Like, and subscribe. <laughs> but like, I don't know. I'm just always so interested. In, like, what's going on behind the scenes? Because everyone's camera is always just pointed in the same direction. So. Sorry if you didn't want to see the backside of Machu Picchu all day, but I just have so much interest in that. Like, look at all this. This is so cool. Wow, okay, and then look at this. The area de explicación. So I bet, like, this is um, divided out where, like, the different tours would come and kind of, like, get out of the way so that the photo takers are here. But it's so crazy so early in the morning because, like, you can't imagine this place filled, but... I'm, I'm sure it is. To guide or not to guide. Um, this is more up our alley to DIY. Now, of course, you are missing a lot of information if you do that. So it, we take it upon ourselves to research the place and understand what you're looking at separately. We really like the flexibility, if you haven't noticed already, of just being at our own pace and not confined in a group and not, you know, like, oh, we're gonna stop here and talk about this or we'll stop here and talk about this. That's our own personal preference. A lot of people that go with guides, of course, love going with the guide. You're getting information that you're not gonna just find on the internet. Um, but this is what works best for us and how we really like to take things in and do it alone and part of What's kind of special right here is just being here quiet.
quiet in the morning and enjoying it. Taking a walk at my doopie doo. Taking a walk at my doopie doo. I just, I, I actually feel like I'm in a postcard. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a couple light rays scattered across the tops of the mountains. Are you kidding me? River. Glaciers. Seven o'clock tourists. And then these tropical birds. I hope you can hear them in the audio. It's so pretty. And you can even hear the river a little bit. <laughs> Good rivers. <laughs> okay, so here's the track three and four people. See, they only get to be that high. And then one and two over here is higher over there. <laughs> okay, it's 7.30. Um, quite a few more like groups have come. You know, you've got like the hikers coming in and their groups. You've got tour guide groups. And uh, I think an hour and a half of taking pictures up here is probably enough. So we'll go and continue on. So fun. Okay, so we just kind of like blew past a couple groups and now feel like we have a chance to explore these down here by ourselves too. Okay, this is pretty dope. This is pretty cool. Okay, Tim. Now it's hitting. Okay. Now it's hitting. Pretty cool. I, I mean, to to have weather like this with the sunbeams coming through is pretty magical. Yeah. I mean, usually we talk about like, now we're down in the ruinas, but it's like, no, you want to look at them and when you're down there, it's not very interesting. But that looks sick. Okay, well, here's our fun story time. So it's too long of a story, but it needs to be included in the video. So I end up making like best friends with the bartender at the um, hot springs. And then he tells me about, like he reads my palm. He tells me what gemstones I need in my life. He tells me he knows my future, but didn't care to share it. Anyways, at the end of this whole like moment, he ends up giving me what he says is a necklace from his, well, he said people. And todo en español. This is the cross, like the southern cross in the sky, and recommended that I bring three coca leaves here to like feel the energy of um, La Pachamama here. So I don't have any coca leaves, but we can have a moment to feel the energy at sunrise at Machu Picchu. He gave me a refrigerator magnet and asked how serious this marriage was. It wasn't like that. Open from seven to 10? I don't know, maybe this is special. Okay, well, here we are. Solo está abierto aquí siete a las diez? Oh, okay. Gracias. Yeah, okay. A special bonus of the morning. This viewing point, seven to 10. Who would have known? So you can hike Wayana Pichu, like you can go up there. Apparently it's very, very steep. We're not doing either of the hikes because it was going to be too long to leave Pepper in the hotel. But you can kind of see like, that is pretty intense. Oh, there's somebody up there. Somebody's up on the top. Oh, right, yeah, the first group doesn't go until seven there. I wasn't sure, I honestly wasn't sure if sunrise was that much better, but already at 8.30, I can already tell. Hey, keep it real. We're not blind to the fact that when we're saying like, oh, there's more tourists here, we are tourists. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a little bit like sitting on traffic and being like, look at all this traffic. We're just helping you kind of strategize, you know, if you're coming here, it, definitely worth it to wake up on the early sign and buy that early ticket. Oh, wow, so is it worth it? Man, if you can swing it, I think that this whole experience of making this already special place 
that much more special by having more time here is one of the values that the money has. You know what I mean? Because we've had expensive places before and it's just like, oh, this is nice or this is a pretty view. This sure. is more like time. Like you get so much more time up here. Yeah, it's like getting a little bonus up here. And then on top of it, um, again, we paid it using points, so that wasn't money out of the bank. Right. But like dinner was phenomenal. Oh my um, gosh, we didn't even Papa's say that and, yet. Yeah, Papa's and Pisco, phenomenal. So fun, we and have they do that every day. We have a crazy breakfast buffet that looks phenomenal when we go back. And we're going to get lunch yeah. even after we check out. Did you know that? We have a no, lunch buffet no. included and she was like, you can have it tomorrow even though checkout's at 11. So that's three like five-star meals. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Like dinner looked beautiful and a lot of times when it looks beautiful, it doesn't, it's nothing special <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tasting. Uh, it was, it was so good. So good. I haven't had like steak like that for. And just ever. to like sit out there and like be here last night and just like sit under the blankets yeah, and look at nice. the stars and be out here like nobody gets to do that. That's so special. Totally understand if the really expensive hotel isn't in your budget for your trip. So in that case, I still would recommend at least going to Aguas Calientes again for time. Like this is just such a different environment than Cusco. I mean, Cusco is cool. You will be there. You gotta fly there to come here. Yeah, absolutely. But like, I don't know to be out here in the jungle with all the orchids, with the tropical birds. Like it's we too different. We had fun walking around. We had fun in the the hot springs. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a different. It's a different vibe. A different vibe, a different trip. Like, look at this, this is so cool. <laughs>